is about the Bola Ahmed Tinubu uh, issues and what the APC has been saying. Uh, it's been years of scrutiny. It's about 30 years or so since this incident happened. And critical appraiser of the antecedent of the former governor of Lagos State and the presidential candidate of the ruling All Progressive Congress, Bola Tinubu. And that has continued. There have been a series of questions on drug related matter and money laundering uh, incidents that happened in the United States. A court paper. Uh, which resurfaced again from the United States District Court for the Northern District of Illinois surface where there are claims that Bola Tinobu's encounter with American authorities over allegations of narcotics, trafficking, and money laundering. But well, yesterday we had Mr. Fessor K. Amo, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, an official spokesperson of the Tinobu campaign. He was on the program where he dismissed the commentaries and some of um, uh, the issues raised by Nigerians on the matter. But tonight, the People's Democratic Party, one of the major uh, opposition parties in Nigeria, says they are interested. And a lawyer and uh, official spokesperson of the PDP presidential campaign council, Mr. Daniel Duala, he joins me here in our Abuja studio. Thank you so much indeed for coming tonight. Thank you for having me. Good Why evening. is your party interested in this matter? Well, because uh, yesterday um, the spokesman for APC reeled out falsehood. Uh, he misled Nigerians in the area of interpreting the law. He misled Nigerians in the area of marshalling out the facts. It was economic, economical with respect to certain documents. So let me put it this way. The documents that are flying, but let me even say this before the document. When you show interest to so run for I, I, office... The first question that I asked is right. why your party is interested. Yes, we're interested because as a political party, we are all going in for the post of the presidency. Mm -hmm. Everybody, Atiku has thrown himself to the uh, field. Same with uh, Asiwaju. And facts came to the public fora, and they misled Nigerians. It behoves of our party to come to the media space, join issues, and distill facts, and reel out the truth as they are, which is why we're here today. Mm -hmm. And that's why I say, first of all, their first quarrel is that this thing happened 30 years ago. It doesn't matter if it is 100 years. If you are vying for a public office, you must be willing to be scrutinized. The reason is because the man who will become the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, that's why they have what they call security vetting, must be somebody that the nation have an idea of his life from when it started to where he is today. So he does not become an object of blackmail or a national security threat. So the fact that it came after 30 years is a non-issue. So let, let's take it from one after the other, right. because there are a lot of issues from the matter of forfeiture and right. whether or not there was a kind of plea bargain, mm -hmm. uh, because these are some of the issues that the Lenel Sik dismissed yesterday. Perhaps you have alternative uh, uh, facts to, to, to some of this matter in law, uh, because he said there was no, uh, it was a forfeiture, but I mean, there was no indictment. Uh, what indictment means, you probably will be able also to shed light. There, uh, plethora of issues that he raised which I'd like you to respond to. But first and foremost, mm -hmm. let's dwell on the premise of right. uh, what happened. Uh, it's called uh, statute of limitation, isn't it? I mean, right. so when something has happened over the past years, and now it's happened in other jurisdictions, does mm -hmm. it affect that person in Nigeria, on the Nigerian soil? No, the question of statute of limitation does not actually arise because one, if it was a crime, it was committed under the laws of the United States. And the laws of Nigeria is different from the laws of the U.S. Was it a crime? No, as if it is a crime. I'm asking if it was a crime. If it was a crime. You're asking if it the was a crime? The incident, that, that scenario that happened. You know, with, uh, money laundering, yeah. dealing with narcotics are criminal offenses set out by separate laws in the United States. The U.S. government introduced what they call non-conviction-based recovery. Because the way they operate is, if they are going to prosecute you on a crime that investigation suggests, they are going to spend a lot of money. And whatever is the proceed of crime that they are targeting, they may not be able to get a hold of it until the conclusion of the trial. But because under non-conviction-based recovery, the idea is to recover as fast as possible the proceeds of crime, they now apply what we call the forfeiture proceedings. Forfeiture is a civil proceeding. Yes, it is, not a criminal proceeding. But the elements that are argued before the civil court 
under forfeiture proceedings are elements of crime. It is the election petition tribunal. It's a sui generis. It is just the proceedings that is civil, but the ingredient upon which the prosecutor will convince the judge that this asset and this asset and this asset are proceeds of crime under the laws of Ulunay are uh, criminal, uh, so, criminal elements. So let me ask, from that scenario, mm -hmm. was Bola Tinubu indicted? Yes, indictment is an allegation. There's a difference between conviction. Yes, he was indicted. But was he convicted criminally? The answer is no. Because he was, didn't go to trial. Pardon? He did not go to trial. Yes, so under non-conviction-based recovery, there, we, there are three types of plea, right? There is a plea of guilt, there is a non, uh, not guilty, and there is no contest. If Bola Ahmed Tinibu, at the time that indictment was brought before the judge, decided to contest it, it will go into full trial, and if the elements are proven, it may lead to his prosecution. What most defendants do in the U.S. is that they don't want a situation where they will be further exposed. So they can afford to let go of the asset. That's why they enter what we call non-contest, what they call nole contendere yeah, yeah. in under Latin. That you're not contesting. You're not saying, I am not guilty. I'm also not contending. So All whatever right. you see, you can just carry it. But here lies the issue. And, and Nigerians must know. It is the moral burden that the nation is confronted by. Somebody who has not denied, has in fact cooperated with the government of Ulinese, right, about a proceed of crime traceable to his account. Because if you look at the document, and I think, Sheldon, if you give me one minute, you understand Absolutely. that. Go ahead. Three separate documents. Mm -hmm. There is one that is the affidavit. The affidavit set out the facts and what the prosecutor was seeking to achieve. Number two, there is a verdict. The verdict is the finding of the court. So the affidavit established a probable cause, and the verdict says that the probable cause has been established under the relevant laws that those assets that they were seizing uh, were actually proceeds of crime. What they do under non conviction based recovery is that once that ex parte application is moved, the judge must say that the defendant be put on notice. Who are the defendants? If you look at that, Proof of service, which is another document, you will see United States of America as plaintiff and Bola Tinibu as a defendant. It's actually the first document on this set of documents, if my producer can go back to it, and is on the left corner of the screen. Right. If you can go back to that so that the that viewers can see. Very important. So that is, so when you see that, that proof of service suppose, presupposes you will see in clear terms the United States government and the defendant. So Bola Tinubu was a defendant in that matter? The account, yes, he is a defendant because he's linked. You see, the owner of the account and the account are like two semes twists. They are umbilically bound. That's why even if you look at that, uh, uh, the, when the accounts were you know, established as defendant, they say belonging to Bola Tinubu. And when the court said that the defendant be asked to come and show reason why it should not be finally forbidden, who are, who are the people, the defendant the court is talking about? Digits, account number comes to court. No, the owners of the account should come to court. And Bola Ahmed Tinubu did not contest. He, in fact, cooperated to release it. This is where he cannot separate himself from the account. So now, let's, th there is an argument uh, right. which uh, the learned Sikh, uh, Mr. Uh, Kayamo, uh, argued yesterday on the program. He said forfeiture doesn't mean penalty uh, and it doesn't mean a fine because I made reference to yeah. a, a portion of the Nigerian constitution which made reference to uh, the, 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 the status of anyone who wants to seek the exalted office of the president and whether or not such persons are being, uh, are being involved in any kind of indictment or, or convictions in the past, fine or penalty or whatsoever. But he said that forfeiture in that nature wasn't uh, a penalty. Actually, but in law, was that a forfeiture? One. Yes, forfeiture. In law, that forfeiture, is it a penalty? Yes, it is. You are forfeiting what rightfully you would have argued as your own. Why are you forfeiting it? Because investigation proof a link between you and that item and that the item relates to narcotics. So narcotics and money laundry is a criminal offense. In fact, when he was fighting you yesterday, he was very unprofessional, quite frankly, because in our discipline of law, you don't look at your colleague, whether he's a student or a lawyer, 
and say, take pen and paper, and I'm teaching you. Very insulting. You know, you know the thing is, in this our own, own business, we have been trained never, never to be emotional, never to draw anything yes. to yourself, because it is not about the journalist. It is about the matter in which we was discussed. So as far as I'm concerned, that was a non-issue for me. No, no, yeah, for but the, the fact that we need to stay on the issue. I agree. The Nigerian people need to understand mm -hmm. this matter, and we cannot erode them or to bamboozle them yeah. out of the issue. We need to stay on it. Let me tell so you. So what, what matters to, to Nigerians right. and the reason why I'm sitting on this chair today is because of the Nigerian. I'm I, being empowered by the Nigerian constitution. I, I agree and so the you. fact remains that right. those matters that Mr. Kayamo raised yesterday, mm. whether or not you are, agree with those matters and whether or not in, your, in his own ag uh, 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 argument, they were right in your own in your own eyes. No, everything he said yesterday we are wrong. You see, so the, you see, I taught in the law school. I'm sorry that I have to say that. So we have several courses we teach in law school. Professional ethics is one of them. It is not enough for you to know the law. How you dispense the law, how you argue the law, is as important as the knowledge of the law itself. And once you're losing an argument, we've, we experience that sometimes in court. Once someone is losing argument in court, the next thing you do is you now descend into legal gutter to begin to challenge. There's no basis for you to say, uh, apart from two prosecutors in Nigeria, there's no prosecutor that comes, come, one, unprofessional because it's champatios. Number two, is it patently false because you will count 30 prosecutors in Nigeria, you will not get to him. Number three, consistently he used the term, I used my trained mind, trained prosecutor. Who trained him? He worked under Gani Fawemi. Gani Fawemi was throughout his life known as, not known as a prosecutor. He was a defense, human rights defense attorney. And when he said, I'm using my prosecutory or my intelligent or my prosecution mind, there are certain things a prosecutor looks at whenever he's confronted with a case. Number one, the, facts, the fact pattern. And number two, inference. A man who was brought to the court. His account was brought to the court. At the time, the prosecutor's mind I'm talking about now, where was he working? How much was he earning? How much was the, uh, the amount that the prosecutor sought so to that, see? So that's on the question mark on the source of the, of, of the, of the money. So that's what a prosecutor thinks. I'm, I'm, I'm suggesting yeah. to his prosecutory mind. If, if the prosecutory mind is functional, these are the thoughts. How much was Bola earning? How much, so how much he was earning, even if you multiply it by number of years, the prosecutor will say, is it enough to have that large sum of money around that so time? So you're raising court? this matter on uh, the, the answer that needs to be gotten from the APC and the presidential candidate on where the source of that money is, isn't it? For the Nigerian people, the question is not just about the source is important, but for the Nigerian people is, there is still a cloud around drug related offenses and drug-related activity with somebody who wants to be the number one citizen of the country. And I will tell you why. Because if you look at opium in Nigeria, very recently you saw the massive busting of cocaine in Nigeria. This idea of drugs and narcotics is a terrible case all over the world. And if someone has that questionable character is elected <laughs> as a president, what it means is that it will embolden people who are into those activities. That is why the person has to come out clean. That is point number one. Point number two, and very important, apart from the drug, if you look at part 799 and part 680, 680 is a court of appeal case, 799 is a Supreme Court case. We are the spokesman, apart from the narcotic case, many years ago went to court and also challenged the certificates of Bola Ahmed Tinubu. In part 7680, actually volume 12, Nigerian Weekly Law Report, part 680, if you look at pages, page 200 and paragraph 10, these are the words of Festus Keyamo. He said, in a final analysis, however, then he now alluded to all the certificates that he laid out in that affidavit. He said, Bola Ahmed Tinubu presented a dubious certificate. Hmm. All right. So he now, has not refrained from that, even though the judgment of that court dismissed that application because he did not attach affidavit under a uh, uh, summons. But one fact is clear: he has not come out today to say those things that I said in that case 
I no longer believe that. Let me, let me uh, quote part of what uh, Mr. Kayamo said. Right. I, I'd like to get your response. He said, the document on the left, and I'd like my producers to, uh, I told you to get this on standby so that you know, people can be able to I mean, understand, as we did yesterday, to follow the conversation. Uh, and that's perhaps the very first page of uh, the first set of the document. Uh, he says, document on the left is the originating process which indicates uh, Tinubu was not a party to the case in REM. The right is a summons to the owner of the accounts to appear to defend the accounts, but does not make him a party. It is like a director appearing to defend a company. That is what Mr. Kayamu said. It is, and he said that, and he believes that. It's not the right document. Uh, uh, please, can you put the, the document, the initial, the very first set of document, that, yeah, that's it. He's saying that it is like, he's comparing, it is like a director defending the company. Is the director not an alter ego of the company? Why do you think a few days, few days ago there was a judgment that Ab, uh, Abdul Rashid Bawa should be committed to prison? Did he, as a person, alleged in that uh, something violated the law? But because he was the chairman, the alter ego, who is the owner of the account? How do you separate the owner and the account? Do you know the doctrine of confidentiality that exists between a banker and a customer relating to the account? Without an order of court, the bank does not have any right to disclose the details of a financial transaction. That is how inseparable your account is with you. And so when the account was joined as a defendant, by the time the, order, the expert order was granted, the court said, let the defendant come and establish why it should not be given the final forfeiture. Who are the defendants? The owners of the account. Let me now ask you again. There is a letter originated from the office, uh, well, written, directed to the then Inspector General of Police. If you bring back that letter, the very blurry one, uh, which was uh, written by an attache of uh, the United States Embassy, which they were trying to find out about Balatinobu. And this is what uh, 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 Balogun was. Uh, I mean, it was written to his office. He was right. the then Inspector General of Police. Uh, this, in some way, uh, the argument is that Balatinobu was exonerated by this document. No, he was not. <laughs> <laughs> is that what we're to say? That is the argument. Now, if that, you look, is, that they don't have any record of Balatinobu. That's because it, under civil forfeiture proceedings, as you can see in that order, because in part of the document, you will see the order of the court. After the order was given and the money was to be taken, underneath, you will see case closed. In other words, it is like you have convicted, I'm just using the term like in criminal case. When you have finished convicting somebody and you sentence him, do you retry him again? That means that case, as far as that case is concerned, it is conclusively convicted, I mean conclusively concluded, not in favor of Bola because he had to forfeit that. That's number one. Number two, I heard him yesterday saying it is the party who are just willing to know because they don't want to field him for the second time and they want to be, mm -mm -mm -mm, don't deceive Nigerians. Uh, his former boss, uh, uh, what is his name? The human rights activist, Ghani. Ghani was the one that started this case. He applied to the court for mandamus. He even asked to be given the right to prosecute the matter. It was Ghani that sparked off this issue, and it was a legal matter. That is why the party was compelled. Even it was around that time that Fesus Kayama also went to court and said, in addition to it, that the man's certificate too is a problem. All uh, right. We need to wrap up now. On the final note, what is your summation on this matter? I am afraid that uh, the conclusion of this case is that from the eyes of the law, Especially if you look at uh, the constitutional provision you cited, Bola may be disqualified from contesting. By who? No, if the matter goes to court, interpreting that provision of the constitution, because the finding in that civil forfeiture proceedings has ended against him, that's why he forfeited right. that. And narcotics and money laundering, whether in America or in Nigeria, is a criminal offense. Thank you so much, Mr. Uh, Daniel Bowala. Uh, I guess uh, the conversation continues uh, with Nigerians. You are the one who decide anyways. The millions of you who have uh, taken your permanent voter cards, you will decide who becomes your next president. Thank you so much indeed, everyone, for tonight's program. I appreciate it. Until I see you again tomorrow at 7 p.m., I'm Shawaki Male. Bye-bye, and God bless Nigeria.